Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of CX Update, your monthly inspiration source for customer experience. Welcome in this new show, everyone. When we talk about the role of humans in a world of artificial intelligence, we, we always look for skills that we humans have and that machines will not have. Um, and, and skills that always pop up, pop up are passion, critical thinking, ethical skills, and also empathy. Empathy always pops up. Um, and it makes sense, huh? we feel that this is a typical human quality, so we wanna use it as a differentiator um, compared to machines. But I'm not so sure if it will be so easy to beat an AI system in terms of empathy. Um, I saw a study this month, a study that came out where they asked 1,000 people to talk to in through screen uh, to either ChatGPT or to a real human doctor. The respondents didn't know if they were talking to the machine or to the human. But the results were, were quite shocking, actually, because 79%, 79% of those people believed that the output that they got from ChatGPT was higher in quality and also higher in terms of empathy. So we believe that empathy is a human skill, so that almost automatically we will beat the machine on that level. This is not the case. Uh, people in that study had the feeling that ChatGPT was more listening to what, what they were saying, to their questions, and that the answers were more in line with what they were hoping to hear, and, and the quality was there, the extension and the, the amount of information was there. Versus with the real doctors, it was more chuck, 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 more rational, faster, less empathy, less information. Uh, so the patient in that case felt a little bit unheard by the human. And, and this is interesting. Uh, it's not because we are human that we're going to be good in being human. Those are two different things. So it's, it's actually going to take an effort for us to win in terms of empathy from the machine. I'm, I'm convinced that. You know, we don't have some secret skill set that will suddenly pop up because AI now is in our world. Um, th this is going to ask for a human transformation. Uh, everyone's always talking about a digital transformation. I, I think that the digital part will be the easy one. You can find companies who will get you all the AI you need. You can train people to work with it. But the human transformation, where we really focus on skills that we need to develop, that we need to use more, that will be the real challenge, in my opinion. Um, and I would go for a parallel track. Uh, the moment that you invest in AI, invest the same amount of energy and time in the humans to make sure that you find those skills, that you develop those skills to differentiate yourself as a human and as a company in a world of automation. Most of you know that I am from Belgium and there we, we have in Belgium a strong beer culture. And in the newspaper this week, there was a group of tasters, professional tasters, that said, let's try out some of the, the Pilsner beers that we have here in Belgium and let's rate them and then let's rank them. And we have a beer called Bavik that was rated as the, the last one on the list. The, the beer that, you know, wasn't really appreciated by the tasting crew. Stella was on number one uh, of that group. Which is bad news, of course. Imagine that you are Bavik and you're running that company and you see that you're rated as, as the, the least preferred beer. That, that's, that's not good. The explanation that they gave was, was yeah, a little bit sad because they said it was bad luck. Um, they said, you know, we, we had this little batch of a few hundred of bottles that was, was yeah, not the same quality as we usually have. And, and this tasting group, by accident, got one of those bottles. I don't know what you think if you hear this, um, but if you have a batch of products that have a lower quality, why were they in the, in the retail? Why could people actually buy them? If you know that they're of lower quality, why do you still sell them? Um, and, and you know, this is for me the, the topic that I've been talking about a lot. I call it opposing interest. So what do you do if there's an opposing interest between you and the market? In this case, are you willing to throw away that batch of lower quality beer you throw away the money that you invested in it to maintain the quality that you hope that you want to achieve and that you want to give to your customers. Apparently they shipped it to the retail and then they had the bad luck that it ended up in the newspaper. Uh, think about the damage that this can cause to your brand reputation and to your revenue because you decided to just ship it because it was yeah, a little bit lower in quality. 
opposing interests. Are you willing to hurt yourself in the short run, also financially, to gain trust in the long run? This is the core question of this of this topic. And some people tell me, yeah, but Steven, isn't this what everyone does? No, it isn't. Like, like take In-N-Out Burgers, one of the most popular hamburger chains in the US. It started out in California, now you have them in, in multiple states. People love them. But if you see the products, they're very similar to, to McDonald's or Burger King. So you could say, why, why do people love them so much? Because they have a reputation of always going for customer first without compromise. And they had this situation in Texas. A couple of years ago, they decided to close down 37 of their restaurants for a single day. And, and the, the reason was that the quality of the buns, the quality of the bread, the buns, was a little bit lower than what they usually have. There was no food safety issue. Uh, there was nothing dangerous about it, but the quality was like 5% less of what they usually have. They decided to shut down all of their restaurants in that state, lose the money, the revenue of that one day, because they believe that every single day they have to deliver a 100% quality. That's why people love in and out burgers. Uh, and, you, and some people then tell me, yeah, but probably, you know, these people are less interested in profitability and those kind of things. Well, if you look to the facts, it's just the opposite. An, an average In-N-Out burger makes about twice the revenue as an average McDonald's. The, the margin is the highest of the entire fast food industry. So the fact that they always choose for the customer, even if that hurts them in the short run, the reward is that in the long run, Customers stay loyal to them, customers become advocates, and that eventually results in financial results that are much better than the industry average. But are you willing to hurt yourself in the short run to gain trust in the long run? A crucial question to test your, your own customer experience spirit. All right, guys, this was my monthly update. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. If you did, please share it with your network, uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I really hope to see you again next week for a new video about customer experience. Bye-bye.